Math 31, welcome to example two. So we're being asked, how long will it take for the money in an account that accrues interest at a rate of 4.25% compounded continuously to double? All right, so I hear how long, so they're gonna ask me for a time value. I hear continuously compounded or compounded continuously. So that's indicating that I'm gonna use the PERT formula. All right, and then I want it to double. And I, I mentioned this in example one, but it, it's worth repeating. So if we take a look at the PERT formula, it's exactly equivalent to the a sub zero e to the kt formula, all right? Where P was our initial amount, right? A sub zero is in our initial amount. R is our interest rate, now K is our interest rate. So it doesn't really matter what labels I give them. And I, we've been trying to, or I've been trying to focus on this all semester. We have to divorce ourselves from certain letters and just remember what these letters represent, right? Initial amount, interest rate. Initial amount, this growth factor. Okay, so instead of using the PERC formula like we did before, I'm just gonna use this one to show you how it's the exact same deal. So how long will it take this money, again, compounding continuously, to double? All right, so I want this to double, meaning I wanna solve for a time value. So at this point, if I see this being four point or this continuous interest rate, excuse me, this interest rate being 4.25%, I know that K in this problem, I'm gonna rewrite that as a decimal, is 0.0425. All right, so I'll keep that in mind. They also mentioned this thing about doubling. All right, if I'm gonna double, I want us to think about what doubling would mean. If you start with A not dollars, or if you wanna think of it as P dollars, and you double, what expression would represent doubling? And let's just give us a, four, a couple of four instances, right? If I had $100, I would double to $200. If I had, I don't know, $702, I would double to $1,404, right? If my initial amount was, I don't know, $1, we'll go with um, $3, I would double to $6. So I want us to think about how we would do it if we had A not dollars, what expression would represent doubling? Well, that would be two times a sub zero. So whatever your initial amount is, if you double it, that implies that you're multiplying by two. So, so let's do that. So I am gonna have this, this y value to plug in, right? We know that y will equal two times a sub zero, right? Because that's saying that your money, a sub zero, doubles. All right. And we're still solving for a time value. So, so let's start plugging these things in one at a time. So based off of this, this initial piece of information, I can write y is equal to a sub zero e to the 0.0425t. Okay. The problem is in this, in this example, they did not give us a sub zero, but they told us we want to double. So what they're asking us is what is the t value when we double and get to a sub zero. What is that? that? That is the variable we're solving for. So I'm gonna plug two times a sub zero in for my y value and see when this thing doubles out. All right, now like always, whenever you wanna solve for a variable that's up in the exponent, isolate that exponential term. So what I wanna do initially is divide both sides by a sub zero. So let me divide this one by a sub zero and this one by a sub zero. And I think you can start to see now the a sub zeros are going to cancel out and that's great. So I'm gonna write my variable term on the left side. I'm gonna have e to the 0.0425t equaling two, right? When does my money double? All right, and then once we get there, we say, oh, you know, all I need to do, since my variable's up in the exponent, I need to log both sides because that's what a logarithm is, it's an exponent. I'm gonna opt for a natural log because I'm using base E here. And I said all of these problems in this, this section, we're gonna do base E. And we've done them in other bases before, which is great. It's just we like base E because we have that natural log button on our calculator. All right, so I'm gonna take the natural log of both sides. The natural log and the E, they cancel out. So as I start to manipulate this, I've got what, 0.0425T equaling natural log of two. And if I wanna solve for t, all I need to do now, I'll just, I'll write that in one extra step so that we can see it. I'm gonna divide both sides. Oh gosh, I really can't write this morning. 
I'm going to divide both sides by 0.0425. And that's going to tell me T will equal whatever this ratio is. All right, let's see what we got. How long does it take my money to double? I don't know. It's going to take a little while. You're only getting 4% interest. Although that's still better than inflation. That's still better than my bank accounts. But here we go. LN of 2 divided by 0 0.0425. It looks like it's going to take you. Ooh. All right, 16.309, so this is always in years because we're talking about annual interest rates. So this is, it'll take me about 16.309 years for my money to double if I could, by some miracle, find a 4% interest rate account and then also by some miracle find a bank that was compounding continuously. All right, so with that, Again, we have the PERT formula just playing out with different letters, but same, same exact concepts. So let's keep playing this out. We're going to look at a zombie problem next. All right, I'll see you in a bit. Bye.